So let, brief introductions again. I've still got uh, <laughs> Professor Neil Ruparelia with me, uh, uh, Bushra Rana doing the echo, John Cousins doing the anaesthetic. Uh, we have a great honour of our cath lab working on a Saturday. And of course, we've got Margot from Oclatec. Uh, Margot, it's a, always a pleasure to have Margot in the cath lab. So uh, we've got an interesting case for you. So we'll launch straight in with the slides. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, so a 52-year-old male who in 2018 had a infarct, uh, but also at that time on an MRI scan were shown to have an old cerebellar infarct. So a new left temporal, but an old left cerebellar. So already multiple strokes. Um, this is a PFO-related stroke, given that there were no other risk factors found. Uh, in 2020, he's had no more strokes. Um, and as I said in the earlier case, we've had a bit of a lull in PFO closure in the UK because of uh, UK funding issues. But we're back online uh, with the government having accepted the 2017 data in 2019. So uh, better late than never. So uh, it, the PFO is a large shunt, which we will show you. So just going to show you the images. So I'm in zero degrees here. And what you see is I'm going to just... Um, sweep through the septum so I'm high up and you can see if I just bring my cursor up you can see the right superior pulmonary vein you can obviously see a bit of the aortic valve coming in here and what you what's striking is the septum secundum which is quite thick and the word lipomatous comes to mind you're wondering whether there's a lot of fatty tissue in between the two folds of tissue and you see the fossoovalis coming into play here and you see the overlap of the tissue of the secundum and the primum so you can see the top of the pfo here just as i show it there and i'm now going to sweep down through the fossa i'm in the mid portion and i'm now sweeping down i notice this thick um, thickened region here so I'm now going to follow it to work out where I think it goes because it seems to extend somewhere so I'm following it down and as I come down I see the I the coronary sinus coming into view here and I see this thick ridge coming and what it looks like is disappearing at the mouth of the IVC which is here so I'm going to interrogate this a little bit more and I'm going to go around to my 50 degree view and the, the, here that ridge comes into view again so I'm going to look for this PFO now. So I'm going to go around and see if I can find the PFO. So there's our PFO. I'll just add some colour here just to convince everybody that there is a PFO lifting there. Uh, there you go. There's our PFO. And then I'm just going to keep going around. I'll stay on colour compare. And that ridge comes into view again, this thick ridge that we see. And you can see the IVC here. You can see the fossa here, which is small. And I'm going to keep going round. And what's really interesting is this ridge is overpowering a lot of the imaging here. So I'm almost at um, nine, 100 degrees, so vertical plane, the aorta, which seems to be quite horizontal and taking up a lot of, of, a lot of the image. So I'm going to roll round and find the SVC. So there's our SVC here, IVC here. You can see that thickened ridge, but I'm going to find the fossa. And I have to roll off um, the, the SVC to find it. So there is your fossa ovalis. And I'm going to keep going round uh, and just show it to you in this plane. So you see thickened septum secundum, a thin fossa, primum tissue, and you can see the coronary sinus coming in just here as well. Um, so I'm going to switch to 3D see if this gives us uh, a good enough picture just one second and just see if we can put all this anatomy together because it looks quite complicated so if we if I roll this round and I turn the gains up a little bit more now see if see if you can believe me so mitral valve is here so I'm going to point it down a bit so it's in the anatomical view this is the LA view of the um, atrial septum you can see actually very beautifully the the right superior pulmonary vein coming in there here is a fossa ovalis which we know is um, intact tissue we've had a look around it in 2D and you can see the attachments of the primum septum up here so if I turn the gains up a little bit more I'm hoping you can get an appreciation that it's dipping down here so what I'm just going to do is I'm just going to switch to this image here so you can see here that the the opening of the pfo is here what we have ascertained is it that the top of the fossa ovalis and the opening of the pfo on the la side is pretty much at the same level so there isn't a tunnel despite what we saw on our 2d if i turn it around and show you the ra view this is what's interesting so it's a little complicated so if you just bear with me i'm going to just set the landmarks so at the top here this is the svc 
So if I just roll it up, I hope you can see the SVC is there. As I roll down, you can see the IVC here. And then to the right at the top, you can see flicking, these things flicking. This is the aortic valve and this is the aortic root here. And now what's interesting is the fossa ovalis is hidden behind this very thick ridge of tissue which is coming from the mouth of the IVC or the edge of it and coming up. But this ridge extends and attaches to the aortic root which we know at the top of this or the edge of this fossa, almost superiorly of the fossa. And this ridge continues round to the what probably is the crista terminalis, that edge where you've got thickened tissue as well. So if I just look up, here is the IVC looking down, sorry, looking up onto the fossa, and there is a PFO opening in there. So it's quite complex anatomy because now what we're wor worried about is how we're going to place the device with all of this tissue in the way. So if I could sort of take over there, Bushra, fantastic pictures. So we've got the issue of a lipomatous septum. We've got the issue of that uh, eustachian ridge. Uh, and we've got uh, the choice of devices that we can take. Now, um, I always balloon size. We discussed that in my previous case. Uh, one, to actually get the proper anatomy and two, to denude the endothelium to make this thing stick together. So uh, Neil's going to go ahead and try and cross the PFO. So what he's done so far is put uh, under ultrasound guidance a, a puncture in the groin. Uh, we've proglided it so that we can close it very easily, whatever sheath size we have. And we've got an MPA catheter, which you can see being directed towards the septum. Um, and it may be that if Bushra goes to the... Oh, here it comes. Here comes the wire. It's about to go through, I think. Uh, we can see it on echo. And it's through. Perfect. So we're then going to direct our wire up into a pulmonary vein. And um, go, come across, it, please. So we're into lung shadow. Uh, so it's clearly in a pulmonary vein, but Bushra can confirm. Yeah, it's disappearing. There you go. In your vein. You can go. you see that? Yep. Great. So, so it's very safe so far. We've heparinized with 10,000 units of heparin, and uh, we've got an exchange length soft 035 wire. And so what we'll do is we'll take ourselves over to the uh, LAO view. And our uh, Oclitec 25 millimeter sizing balloon can be brought to the table. That does not go through the eight French sheath. So we'll remove the eight French sheath. Table towards me. <laughs> That's it. Fantastic. And so we'll bring the balloon forwards and we'll attach up the balloon. It's got an 80-20 mix in it. It's got some markers, which are five millimeters each, so that we can have a guesstimate of balloon sizing. But who needs to guess when we've got Bushra on TOE? She'll be able to measure the waist for us in any case. The Bushra, while we're getting this up, mm -hmm. uh, on the previous case, we showed how you measure on 3D. Um, yeah. I I'm guessing that this uh, gap is going to be probably about 10 millimeters only. Without measuring it on 3D echo, is that your guess as well? Yeah, it looks about that to me. But I, I can do that. I can do a direct measure. So you can see that. Can you see the image there? Yeah. So what we can do is you can, what's nice about the latest 3D is you can actually freeze, scroll through. So you can see there it's there. So if we measured it at the top, which isn't, isn't actually where the PFO is, it's coming out at about eight millimeters. And I think if you look at the opening here, it's going to be probably no more than, well, maybe five millimeters. Okay, well, oh, let's see what yeah. the balloon actually shows. So uh, we're about to do a balloon sizing. So uh, Neil's got the balloon across. We can uh, modify it to just get into the tunnel. And we're going to watch for a good neck with a dumbbell either side, which is sort of coming. A little bit further inflation, I think. And I think that's holding there. Okay, so we'll save that picture. Okay, so Bushra, do you want to uh, measure that up? Yeah, I'm just looking to get a nice on-axis view of this at the moment, which is proving interesting because this interesting angle it's taken. Great. Okay, so we're going to take, a, we've got Oculotech devices here today, and we're going to take a nine French sheath, which takes most of their devices at the smaller end. My only debate was whether it's going to be a 1618 PFO or a 2325 PFO, which is my standard. So I think I'm going to stick with my standard 2325, which fits in with your 25 uh, Amplatz uh, range. Uh, if it looks uncomfortable, I will downsize to the 1618 device. But uh, I think, you know, we'll see what the 2325 standard device looks like. So first off, you can see the pistol pusher. Okay, so the pistol pusher. Uh, we'll take the pistol pusher. Okay, and uh, Maria, hold the gun. Okay, is that dangerous? Handing, uh, handing a lady that might be a bit irritated a gun. She's been working all day. 
Okay, so we've got uh, the delivery system that comes with Oculotech. Okay, it doesn't come with a three-way tap. We are going to flush just to wet it a little bit. Okay, and then we're going to take our device. So, Marie, you hang on to that. We'll take a device, a standard device. And you can see the device, which uh, has a very narrow waist and got uh, one uh, ball to catch onto. Okay, so, uh, Maria, if you fire the gun, okay, that opens, I'll put that on the white, so that opens the pair of forceps and slowly release. Okay, so that's caught it and you can see it's rotating nicely. So, if we look at this, we can then lock. Oh, it's not locking so easy. There we are, it's locked. So once we've pressed the lock button, we can't release it by accident. So I will then take it underwater. And I, t I tend to stretch the device. I'm not sure it's essential, but I tend to stretch the device as I pull it in underwater. And the other thing I do is always check that it comes out in a decent shape, which it has done. Yeah, so I've done it underwater. Okay, so the, the whole sheath was underwater when I was pulling it in. And then on top of that, I'm going to flush out so that there are absolutely no chance of bubbles uh, in here. So I'm flushing out with a whole syringe load. I'm pretty convinced there are going to be no bubbles in that sheath. And you can see that the sheath is up in the pulmonary vein and we've slowly redrawing the wire and the introducer, leaving the sheath parked very comfortably in the vein. We've got the device, we've got the silver pusher, we've got the black. Okay, so I want the device, which is gold, going to silver, then going to black, and then bleeding back to go red, and then we're safe. So Neil's going to just push that device in. We're nowhere near the hearts. So we'll just focus on the table. Okay, so it's got to black. And uh, I'm not sure everyone does this, but we here certainly want to tap this out so that it's solid red in this section, so there can be no blood, ahead, no air ahead of the device. And that is now solid red. So we can switch a tap off. And then to avoid, avoid Bushra being irradiated, uh, then what we'll do is we'll keep uh, Bushra showing us the sheath. And uh, we're going to go it up oh. until we can see the device in the sheath. OK, so we've got the device in the sheath. OK, and now we'll be fluoroing. And uh, Neil's basically going to uh, pull the sheath back and release the first disc of the device in the left atrium. So it's a question of pulling back with the uh, sheath putting forward with the device and not deploying it in the pulmonary vein. And so we're just going to bring it back. Nice slow manoeuvre. The device is about to come out. There it is. OK, so we'll pause there. Just out of the appendage, I think. So uh, So we'll... Just at the mouth of the appendage. OK, so we can just make sure that we're not in the appendage. So we're good. OK, fantastic. And it's being pulled down. So so I think the next part is, is really to actually have the two together, both the uh, cable and the sheath. And we're going to draw that down onto the intraatrial septum as a unit. And you can see that coming down on TOE beautifully. And so then it's a question of maintaining tension right against the septum and then deploying the second disc by unsheathing it. So Neil's just going to do that for us. And we'll see whether that ridge makes a difference to us or not. OK, so that's the device opened up. And let's take a cine of it, because I think it looks pretty good on cine. So that looks a well-sat device just on the fluoroscopy, but it all depends on how it sits on echo. That's the reason we got the transesophageal echo. So I'm just going to have a quick look around, yeah. So just start with 3D. I always like to look at it on 3D first. So this is the LA view. Um, you can see the device sitting here. You can see mitral valve there just to get your orientation. And I'll just put it there. So it's, at the moment, it looks nice there. And it's not sitting up against the roof or against the aorta. We're pleased about. I'm just going to roll it round. And then just look at it on the left atrial side. Sorry, the right atrial side. So you can see that the... Here's the cable, there's the um, device, and what I'm interested in is to find out what, how it relates to this ridge. And I can see the ridge coming up and disappearing under there. So it looks like, maybe you can see it better now actually, it looks like that this device has tucked itself nicely under the aorta here and the ridge here. So that looks really nice. So already I'm feeling happy. So now I'm just going to double check all of this on 2D. Just going to go around with a little bit of colour and we'll just view all the different views. So I'll go back to zero quickly 
and just have a sweep through the device here, see its relationship. So it's not quite in profile in this view. Now I begin to see in profile. I'm trying to focus on seeing four portions. I'm trying to see the LA disc, RA disc, the waste, if I can see it like I can here, and then the cable um, point, uh, the central pin where the cable is. So I'm just going around. I'm looking at color, making sure the device profile looks good, which it does. It's nicely sitting, relatively flush. It's this, there's a slight bit of tension. So this part of the uh, RA disc is being pulled because it's still attached, and I see a bit of flow there. So we t typically see that, so I'm not so worried about that, especially because the rest of the device looks pretty good. Um, so, and I'm just seeing how, here how it relates to that ridge. And you can see nicely that, in fact, if I just come off to um, color compare, you can see nicely that actually the ridge is here, but the device is not resting on it. It's just tucked in under there. So it, while this looks pretty good, I'm happy with this. Can you, can you rotate it to get to the fat part of the septum that was lipomatous and see what that looks like? There, there. Can you see that? If I just roll onto it there, and then okay. gradually there's the device sitting and it seems to have, what's nice about this device, I'm, I'm not used to this device. I've only really um, a, quite, um, a built experience it but since I've been here back at Imperial for the last year or so. And what I've realized is that this device, while it's stiff, it's very good at conforming to anatomy. So it does very well when you're dealing with um, a, a thickened secundum septum and a thin primum septum. And it seems to um, conform to this despite being a relatively stiff Device. Are you happy with that, Iqbal? Yeah, so can you try 130? If you yep. go to 130, there we go. Okay, I think we're seeing uh, the fat septum really coming into it, uh, just there. That's perfect. Uh, but let's do a push-pull. So we'll, uh, we'll pull it to open up the right atrial disc. Can we do that now? Uh, so we'll pull it to, that's it, and then we'll push it. And uh, it's, you can see that that's actually not going anywhere. So we're going to release the device. And so there is a technique to the release. You remember I showed you that there was a pair of forceps at the end of this. And so when we uh, release by unlocking and then pulling the trigger, then I will, my job will be just to pull the trigger and keep it pulled until Neil has managed to pull completely into the sheath so I don't biopsy anything by accident. So, Bushra, are you ready? Yeah, we're live. Okay, okay fantastic. So we're going to unlock by going forwards with this button. Okay. okay, we heard the click. And then on fluoro, I'm going to pull the trigger, and that's released it. And we're going to pull it into the sheath, and then I can re merrily release it. And you can see the device has sort of just changed slightly to its orientation as, it, as we released it. And it's nowhere near as much as the old version of the Amplatzer, because the Amplatzer was a screw-in cable. I haven't had the opportunity to use their new deployment kit. But we're now going to be in the hands of Bushra, uh, hopefully telling us the device still looks okay. Otherwise, I've got my snare set available to yank it out again. Bushra, do I need to yank this out? Not at all. So you did you see, I was recording it on uh, Echo. I'll just show you that again. This is the device being released. And in fact, as it's released here, you see it sits much better. So it assumes a nicer shape. So already, I'm already, already happy. But I'm just going to double check now. So let's just start. Let's go backwards. Let's just start with our 135 view where you can see the septum. You can see, as I was saying, how well this device um, conforms to the septum, the, the different um, different sizes from the secundum here on the right, which is a, a, about a centimeter thick, to the very thick um, septum primer. So I'm just going to do that with color. So I'm just going to review. There's a bit of flash of flow, but that's through the device, just there at the edge. So that looks okay. I'm just going to keep going round now to the one uh, to 90. So looking at the SVC and also the aorta as I swing around. And so I'm just going to pop that in and just screen inferiorly and then superiorly. So, so far it looks pretty good. I'm not seeing any abnormal, unusual flow. So now I'm going to come to the aorta. And this is a bit, this is a view I'm interested in. And I'm just going to roll around to bring the ridge out. So there's a ridge and it's actually slightly fallen away from the ridge, which is nice. It's just there on the edge. And I think the profile looks good, Iqbal. I think given the anatomy... Yeah. Uh, this okay. is good. Happy. Yep. Okay. So I think that's good. And I think the particular thing with this device is that very fat septum looks to have actually been squashed slightly by this device and have a very plain uh, edge to it. I think some other devices might look re remarkably angulated and this is not doing that. It looks really good. So I'm expecting a good seal here. So we're, we've given local anesthetic into the groin and we've got a proglide suture in. So Busher is doing a far field view just to make sure there's no pericardial effusion. Uh, that's our final safety check. 
we'll be pulling this sheath out. We'll give protamine. Uh, so we gave heparin. I tend to reverse the protamine. I know not everyone does. We've got a proglide suture just because it's getting slightly later in the day here in the UK. We don't want to do a lot of pressing. The proglide, as we pull out, uh, should actually seal the vein without too much compression being needed. And the idea would be that this gentleman, the only reason for keeping him overnight is uh, because he's got no one at home with him. So we'll keep him for one night, uh, but otherwise we'd send him home. Uh, so it leaves us to close up to say we've had a great day. And uh, we've got a fantastic PFO closure result out of this. Uh, uh, thanks to the team at the Hammersmith Hospital for doing this. Uh, Neil, great job with the case, Bush, for beautiful imaging. And uh, JC, thanks for keeping that patient nice and stable.